Hi, so I hear you want to start a business. My name is Christina Wynn, and I am a business advisor with the Illinois Small Business Development Centers located in the Chicagoland Chamber of Commerce. Today, I want to share information with you about how to write a business plan, what are the components of a business plan, what information goes within each of those components, and give you a couple of tips on how to best um, go about creating your business plan and using it as a tool to start a sustainable business and even grow a business that you currently have. So I'm gonna do your 15 minute takeover today and I'm gonna get right into the information. So there are seven components to a business plan. The first is the executive summary. Then there is the company overview. Then you have your products and services your market analysis, your operating and management plan, your marketing and sales plan, and then finally your financial plan. So I know that there are some modified versions of a business plan, but if you're looking to start your business sustainably, and I mean that to say you want to understand every component of your business, not just some parts, but to truly have a holistic, uh, full view of the business that you are starting or you are looking to grow, then I encourage you to create a fully flushed out business plan, which will include those seven components that I just named. And so now I wanna take a deeper dive into each component so that you can understand what information goes into that particular bucket. So the first one that I spoke about is the executive summary. Now, an executive summary is actually supposed to be written last because it is a summation of the entire business plan. So once you get all of the other components complete, then you'll go back and kind of summation or, or create a summation of the total plan. And it's typically not longer than one page. The language is optimistic and is speaking directly to whomever is reading the business plan. So if you're looking to use your business plan for a loan or to get investors or to get stakeholders uh, buy-in and partnerships or things of that nature, whatever the purpose of that business plan is for, you want to make sure the language that you're using in the executive summary speaks directly to the uh, end user or the end reader in this case. <clears throat> the second component of the business plan is your company overview. Now, it sounds like that would be just simple, like, hey, you know, um, I own a company, we offer X, Y, and Z, and we're located in Chicago, Illinois. That is not the case. There actually is a lot more content that should go into the company description. And so it'll talk about the legal structure that you have. So are you legally an LLC? Are you a sole proprietor? Are you an incorporation? It'll also talk about a brief history of how the business got started, the nature of your business and what you supply. What is the story behind this business that you created? What are your true outcomes and goals that you are looking to um, create with your business? That'll be talked about in the company description. You will also give an overview of your products, your services, your customers, and your supplies. So really understanding every component, if you will, that goes into your business and making it um, a functioning business. What all of those, what are all of those components? It'll give a summary of your company's growth and a summary of the short-term and long-term business goals. So if you are an entrepreneur or business owner who is already making money in the company description, you wanna give a summary of what that growth or what that traction has looked like over however many months or years that you've been in business. Um, 
if you are just getting started or if you already are operating a business, you will want to include your short term and long term goals. What is the plan for this business? Is it to expand to new markets, open new locations? Um, what does that look like? What are really those, again, short-term and long-term goals? So that is the second bucket of the business plan is your company description. The third bucket are the products and services description. So this clearly describes what you are selling and focuses on customer benefits, which is really important. So it's easy to just give a laundry list of information as it relates to your product or services. But what's important is that you're highlighting what those customer benefits look like based on the products and services that you offer. <clears throat> the product and service description will include an explanation of the market role of your product or service and the advantages that you have over competitors. So what is your market role? Are you a dis had, Did you disrupt the market with the product or service? Are you fitting into the market? Are you creating a new op market opportunity? What does your competition look like? What products or services are they offering that may be different from what you're offering that further helps to understand what your position is in the market? What is your niche? Who are you really targeting with your product or services and it can't be everybody it has to be a, a focused audience it will give information about the life cycle of your product or service so if there is a life cycle um, that will be described in the products and services section it will give relevant copyright patent or trade secrets as it relates to your products um, if you have an intellectual property that you've protected, it will also um, be described here as well under that copyright, patent, or trade secrets um, bucket. The uh, product and service description will also share research and development activities that may lead to new product or services. So it's important to show that you see opportunities for growth with your product or service that you have. And so you will wanna describe what type of opportunities that you have uncovered through research and just um, different forms of development of your product or services. So that is the third bucket or component, the third component of the business plan. The fourth component is a market analysis. So it requires quite a bit of research into your market, but this particular research activity is going to bring a lot of clarity to many other components of your business, really understanding who is that target audience? Who are those ideal customers for you? Where is really uh, the market opportunity for your product or service, that type of information should be uncovered as you're doing that research. So the market analysis, what it does, it provides the reader with an understanding of how well the business owner knows and understands its market. So like I just said, who are you really selling to? Who is really that ideal customer or clients? It is not everybody. It has to be niched down. So it'll include <clears throat> an outline of targeted customer segments. So this includes the size. So maybe you're only working with small businesses or maybe you're only working with um, mid-sized businesses. It will talk about demographics. So if you're only working uh, locally in the Chicagoland area or uh, domestically for the United States, whatever that looks like will be described in your customer segment. And that's for each group. So you can have different groups. So maybe uh, women are a group, but then you have black women who are a group or you have college educated women who are a group, Latina women who are a group, um, white women who are a group, right? You have different segments and each segment of the market will have its own um, specifications like demographics and size. You will uh, uncover the industry description and outlook, including statistics. So as you're doing that research, you're going to um, be looking for that type of data statistics on the industry what is the outlook of the industry? A good example of this is the real estate industry, right? It, it 
it fluctuates. Um, there was a crash in 2008 of the real estate industry as a whole, right? So it's kind of important for you to understand the industry as a whole and how you fit into the industry, what uh, future opportunities may become available, I guess, or come about based on the industry that you're in. You will give historical, current, and projected marketing data related to your industry, your particular products and services, really digging deep. Again, this is the market research analysis. So you're really digging deep and learning your market, learning the industry, the business that you are in. And then finally, it'll give a detailed evaluation of your competitors. So this is where you're really doing um, intentional research on the competition that's out there to understand, are there gaps in the market that, that you can potentially fill and meet those needs and create opportunity for yourself? Is it saturated? Do you need to consider adding on other products or services to make you more unique in a saturated market? These type of questions will be answered as you do uh, competitive analysis and market analysis of um, the business that you're in. So that is the fourth component, that market research analysis. The fifth component is the operating plan. The operating plan is like the engine of your business. So you offer this product or service. This is the group of people that you're operating or you're offering it to. But how does it all come together and work and create a well-oiled machine where you're able to produce those outcomes or products or services that um, you claim to, to through your business. So the operating plan outlines how the company currently and will continue to develop and maintain a loyal customer base. A tight operations plan, a clear operations plan will support customer loyalty, uh, will help with recurrent clients, and again, will support the overall uh, functionality of your business. So it, it, it includes an explanation of how you will promote your business. What tools and avenues will you use to get the word out? That's important. You can have a business, but if no one knows you exist, then you run into the unfortunate problem of not having customers or clients. So it's really important to understand how you'll promote your business. It will detail the cost, pricing, promotions, distribution. So not only how will you promote it, but what does that cost look like and what distribution channels are you using? Radio ads, are you using social media? Are you using billboards, uh, commercials? What tools or modalities are you using? It will explain how the company will function. So again, what processes are in place? what people are in place, what systems are in place that allow you to function as a business. It will talk about sources of labor and the number of employees that you have or will project to have in order to operate your business. And finally, it'll give data on the operating hours and the facilities of the business. So again, the operations is the engine of the business is the, the, the whole, it's the engine of the business. So that's what's included in the operating plan. Next is the marketing and sales plan. Now this is just as important as um, every other component, but this is really, really important. Um, a lot of people um, have a tendency to overlook the marketing and sales plan. You put the work into creating this wonderful product or service, um, but then when it comes to the take to, uh, the take to market plan or the go to, sorry, the go to market plan um, or what that sales plan looks like, that isn't always um, fully thought through. And so this part of the business plan is truly crucial and it's really beneficial to you as the business owner in really 
thinking through and putting a plan of action together as a as it relates to your sales and marketing. And so it'll give details about your strategy for penetrating the target market that you've identified in that market analysis that you did you did earlier. So it will include a desired strategic positioning. So you might have a placement in a market right now, right? But you have a strategy on uh, penetrating a different part of the market and it, it'll detail what that strategy looks like. It'll give a description of your product and service offerings and the potential for product extensions. So we talked about this a little bit earlier as far as thinking through um, what future project or uh, in that market research analysis where it talked about doing research on opportunities for the future with your product. Now this marketing plan is kind of applying that information and thinking through um, what the description of those extensions may look like as you continue to find a more opportunity in your market space. It'll give images and branding strategy or image and branding strategy. So how is your um, product or service, your branding, your imaging, how is it being placed into the market and leveraged in supporting that marketing and sales plan? How is your overall brand tying into um, the overall strategy that you have? is going to talk about promotional strategies. So again, thinking through what type of promotional avenues you will use. Will it be through Google ads, Yelp? Does it need to be localized? Does it need to uh, reach larger audiences? Really thinking through that strategy. And then pricing. So just as important as it is to understand uh, what the plan of action is, is equally as important to understand what that budget looks like. Um, I have worked with quite a few clients who kind of underestimated the amount of money that needed to be put towards marketing and sales. And the unfortunate ripple effect is that you don't have effective marketing and sales now. And so you aren't really seeing the return on investment um, from the initial monies that were spent in starting the business as quickly as you want to. And it's because you didn't properly budget for the marketing and sales and promotional side of the overall business strategy that has to happen. It's just, it's just a part of it. You have to market, you have to be doing sales, you have to be promoting your product. And so understanding the cost that'll be associated with that is very important and it will be detailed in the marketing and sales plan. You will wanna give an actual breakdown, a timeline, how long are you planning uh, to run certain types of promotions or ads? What are you projecting that it will look like in sales for you based on um, understanding who your market is, what your market is looking for, and uh, understanding that you have the, the proper type of messaging to reach your market effectively. Woo, I hope that wasn't too much. So, But that's the marketing and sales plan, and that's the sixth component of the business plan. The final component is your financial plan. Now with this portion, I recommend you work with your accountant or a financial advisor or a business coach who has accounting specialty because the financial plan is, um, if you're going for a loan or investors, among other things, this is gonna be a focused area for them. So you really wanna make sure that the plan that you are putting together and sharing out really makes sense and it supports, again, the overall efforts of what you're looking to accomplish. And so the budget is important. It's important to know if you're asking for money, it's important to know how much you're asking for and be able to articulate how that money will be used to grow your business, how you will be able to pay that money back based on that marketing and sales plan, based on your operations plan, based on the management that you have in place. Um, it all ties together. And so the financial plan will include historical financial data for the past three to five years. So if you are a new business, obviously you won't be able to produce historical data. But if you have been in business, it will be important to share that here. Even if there isn't substantial growth, that's okay. Even if there is decrease, that's okay. You need to still tell the story. That's what it's about, telling your financial story. 
um, you will have prospective financial information, including um, a brief analysis of financial data. So again, understanding, um, and when I say projected, or when I say uh, analysis of financial data, we're thinking about um, pro projected financial data. So you understand how much you will need for what, and you want to compare it to other industry financial data. Um, again, this is something you want to work with your accountant on because it is very specific to each situation, but high level, you will need to produce financial statements like your federal taxes, like balance sheets and income statements if you are um, already established business. If you are a new business, you need to be able to make projections here. You need to understand again how much money you need, if that's what you're writing this business plan for, and asking for money, how much money you need as far as your ask, but just generally speaking, how much startup capital will you need? How much operating expenses will be required of you. So startup capital and operating expenses are different buckets, but it all ties into the overall budget of what you're looking at. So um, the financial plan is really important. The numbers are really important. And again, I highly recommend you work with a professional in producing the financial plan. So that are those are, so those are the seven components in creating a fully flushed out business plan. Keep in mind, a business plan of this nature can be upwards of 30 pages. There will be an appendices um, that will also be included where you can put charts, pictures, data, um, any additional content that supports the overall plan. But this is where you really wanna start. And I know it sounds daunting to think about doing it yourself, but certainly utilize the SBDC services. We have programs and a team of business advisors who can support you through the process. So don't feel like you have to do it alone. This was your 15 minute takeover today with me, Christina Wynn. And I hope that this was really, really helpful for you. See you all next time.